This is a prophecy given by Almighty God, the sovereign of this universe, to Jewish prophet Ezekiel. And I read from a division in the Bible we call the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. The Lord said, Ezekiel, son of man, condemn Gog, that wicked ruler of the kingdoms of Meshach and Tubal, in the land of Magog. Tell him, I, the Lord God, am your enemy, and I will make you powerless. I will put a hook in your jaw and drag you away, both you and your large army. You command cavalry troops that wear heavy armor and carry shields and swords. Your army includes soldiers from Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, as well as from Gomer and Beth Targumah in the north. Your army is enormous. So keep your troops prepared to fight, because in a few years I will command you to invade Israel, a country that was ruined by war. It was deserted for a long time, but its people have returned from their foreign nations where they lived once. The Israelites now live in peace in the mountains of their own land. But you and your army will attack them like a fierce thunderstorm and surround them like a cloud. When that day comes, I know that you will have an evil plan to take advantage of Israel, that weak and peaceful country where people live safely inside towns and have no walls or gates or locks. You will rob the people in towns that was once a pile of rubble. These people lived as prisoners in foreign nations, but they have returned to Israel, the most important place in the world, and they own livestock and property. The people of Sheba and Duran, alongside the merchants from the villagers in southern Spain, will be your allies. They will want some of the silver and gold, as well as livestock and property that your army takes from Israel. I, the Lord God, know that when you see my people Israel living in peace, you will lead your powerful cavalry from your kingdom in the north. You will attack my people like a storm cloud that covers the land. I will let you invade my country Israel so that every nation on earth will know that I, the Lord, am holy. The Lord said to God, long ago I had my prophets warn the people of Israel that someday I would send an enemy to attack them. You, Gog, are that enemy. And that day is coming. When you invade Israel, I will become furious. And in my anger, I will send a terrible earthquake to shake Israel. Every living thing on earth will tremble in fear of me. Every fish and bird, every wild animal and reptile, and every human. Mountains will crumble, cliffs will fall, and cities will collapse. The Lord will make the mountains of Israel turn against you. Your troops will be so terrified that they will attack each other. I will strike you with diseases and punish you with death. You and your army will be pounded with rainstorms and hailstones and burning sulfur. I will do these things to show the world that I, the Lord, am holy. The Lord said, Ezekiel, son of man, condemn Gog and tell him, You are the ruler of Meshach and Tubal, but I, the Lord, am your enemy. I will turn you around and drag you from the north until you reach the mountains of Israel. I will knock the bow out of your left hand and the arrows out of your right hand, and you and your army will die on those mountains. Then birds and wild animals will eat the flesh of your dead bodies left lying in the open fields. And I, the Lord, have spoken. I will set fire to the land of Magog and to those nations along the seacoast that think they are so secure. And they will know that I am the Lord. My people Israel will know me, and they will no longer disgrace my holy name. Everyone on earth will know that I am the holy Lord God of Israel. The day is coming when these things will happen, just as I have promised. When that day comes, the people in the towns of Israel will collect weapons of their dead enemies. They will use the shields, bows, and arrows, spears, and clubs as firewood, and there will be enough to last for seven years. They will burn these weapons instead of gathering sticks or chopping down trees. That's how the Israelites will take revenge on those who robbed and abused them. I, the Lord, have spoken. There are two major events that will affect you, even if you're not living in one of the nations listed as the enemies of Almighty God. 
The first event will be that Almighty God will prove himself holy in the eyes of the entire world by fulfilling these 2,680-some-year-old prophecies and many other prophecies concerning the earthquake in Israel. This horrible earthquake will shake and bring fear to every creature on earth. There are many earthquakes all over the world, sometimes daily earthquakes, but no earthquake in written history has ever been so great that it could be felt and bring fear to every creature on the earth. The entire world will see God's anger against his enemies in the destruction of their armies and fire falling on the enemy nations. Almighty God makes the entire world aware that he is the holy God, that he sent Israel into exile, and that he restored and gives favor to Israel as he pleases. When God fights for Israel, Israel will recognize and give glory to God as a sovereign Lord. And then Almighty God will pour out his Holy Spirit on the people of Israel. Almighty God will bless, prosper, and protect Israel. And Israel will love and glorify God. Every religion on earth will know the truth that the sovereign Lord of Israel is the one true holy God. And the second important event that will affect you, even if you're not living in one of the nations listed as the enemies of Almighty God, is the effect on you of the world-shaking earthquake itself. The mountains will be overturned, the cliffs will crumble, and every wall will fall into the ground. Think about what will happen in those great cities of the world when the skyscrapers and the high towers are shaken apart and collapse. The great dams burst. The power grids are shaken apart. The giant fuel and chemical tanks collapse to suffocate or to burn people for miles around them. Cliffs and glaciers will fall into the sea and cause tidal waves around the world. Stadiums, churches, mosques, and religious shrines will crumble and fall to the ground. The infrastructure of every country of the world will collapse in the same hour. Many of the active volcanoes will erupt due to the same geological pressures which caused the earthquake. Every person left on earth will witness the anger of Almighty God against his enemies. And as the nations of the earth are trying to recover from the devastation, Israel will have a time of peace and favor of God to renovate and rebuild the entire country. The fuel and equipment captured from the dead armies will supply Israel for seven years. There are several prophecies concerning several end-time earthquakes. And we should not confuse them all to be the same earthquake. That would really mess up your end time prophecies timeline. The purpose of this earthquake is written in Ezekiel 38 and 39. The purpose for the other great earthquakes are written in the other prophecies. The timing of this earthquake is very soon, as made evidence in the following facts. Israel was restored to become a nation in one day, which was May the 14th, 1948. The birth pangs began and Israel has been at war with its neighbors ever since that day. This was the fulfillment of the prophecy given to Isaiah roughly 2,725 years ago. Isaiah 66, 7. Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pangs come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Israel has been fighting day to day for its life since the day it became a nation on May the 14th, 1948. This fighting is part of the labor of birth. The 2,680-some-year-old prophecy in Ezekiel 38 tells us that God will force Turkey, Ethiopia, and Iran to attack Israel under the leadership of Russia and its satellite nation, in the time after Israel has been restored as a nation. Most anyone whom is following these nations in the world news can see that they are planning a massive attack on Israel now. When you see Russia and its criminal gang of nations attack Israel, the world-shaken earthquake is soon to follow. For thousands of years, mankind has built temples, shrines, churches, and mosques all around the world which Almighty God is rejecting all at the same time. An earthquake this massive in Israel should cause the mosque, the foundation of all the old temples, and all the other buildings on the Temple Mount to crash downhill into the houses of old Jerusalem. No nation on earth will be able to stop Israel from cleaning the Temple Mount down to bedrock and building their new temple anywhere they want to build it. 
The next seven years after this earthquake, Israel will rebuild the temple and the nation in peace. These events are made very clear in the prophecies of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. The very next message Almighty God gave to Ezekiel began in Ezekiel chapter 40. Ezekiel received a vision from God. A messenger in the form of a man with a measuring rod came to Ezekiel and told Ezekiel, tell Israel everything that he sees. Then he took Ezekiel to a very high mountain in Israel. In this vision, Ezekiel was carried through time and space to a future time when a new temple had been built. The new temple that the messenger showed Ezekiel has never been built up to this point in history. The messenger measured many different parts of the temple with its gates and its courts. In this future temple, there are rooms for priests to prepare sacrifices. The daily biblical sacrifices will be restored in this future temple because the Messiah has not yet been revealed to the Jewish people. Once the proper dedications and sacrifices are made for the temple, the glory of the Lord enters through the eastern gate and fills the entire temple. Then the eastern gate is to be sealed up while Israel waits for the Messiah to enter into the temple through that eastern gate. Ezekiel is told many things concerning the building of the temple and the sacrifices and told to write these things down so that Israel could build the temple and keep the temple laws. As a note between you and I, there are several groups in Israel now with the plans ready to build the temple as Ezekiel described it. There are many stones already cut and many instruments already made to begin the daily sacrifices. Once the earthquake debris is cleared from the Temple Mount, the building of the temple would become a national priority. The temple that Ezekiel saw over 2,680 some years ago is the same temple that will be built shortly after the earthquake. During the first seven years after the earthquake, the survivors of the other nations of the world will fall into a dark age of constant internal wars, plagues, and starvation, and still the tribulation period has not yet arrived. Those nations like the United States, which were trying to divide Israel into two nations, will themselves be divided into several nations. The scriptures are not clear as to exactly what happens to the U.S., Canada, and Mexico during these troubled times. The nations of the old Roman Empire will regroup into ten nations, and as they rebuild, the stage will be set for the rise of the Antichrist. I've only discussed a small portion of the prophecies concerning the near end-time events. So before we move on to part three, I would like to quote what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, 32. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Let's move on to what Jesus said about our time in Luke 21, 34 through 36. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Friends, my heart is heavy in the knowledge that the entire world is falling into the hands of an angry God. And I am grieved that the entire planet has become a Sodom and Gomorrah that has provoked God's anger. The earthquake will kill many people and destroy the easy way of life that we know. Both the wicked and the righteous will die together. As Jesus said, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Friend, unless you and I agree in prayer now, just follow me as I pray for us to be able to escape all that is about to happen and that we may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, friend, just follow me in prayer. Father God, we agree together and ask that you forgive our sin, iniquity, and trespasses. Cleanse our minds and spirits with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and help us in our turning away from sin. Deliver us from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and keep us strong and holy. Please, mighty God, spare us from your anger and extend your mercy to us. Help us to escape all that is about to happen to those on the face of the earth and that we will be able to stand before the Son of Man. We agree in touching for each other and receive this as done in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.